Today we're going to be looking at the octave chord, octave chord pattern for your left hand. It's a great way to establish a steady rhythm while your right hand plays the melody. To do so, we're going to practice the song Victory in Jesus, which is a really popular 4-4 timing gospel song. I'm playing it from the Psalms, Hymns, and Spiritual Songs hymnal, which has it written in the key of G. You can also find an arrangement on my website of Victory in Jesus, where we actually have that octave chord motion written out. I'm going to play through about a verse of it first so you can hear what this pattern sounds like. And then we'll go back and break it down into the process that I use whenever I'm playing this pattern for hymns. So essentially, the octave chord, octave chord motion is that I play a octave on beats one and three, and I play a chord on beats two and four. Now, as with any pattern in hymn playing, it's not always going to work out perfectly. So there are times we're going to have to adapt. But what you do is you look at the chord you're playing on beat one, that gets an octave. Look at the chord you're playing on beat two, that will get a chord in your left hand. Measure one of Victory in Jesus stays on a G chord. So notice the two options I have for an octave chord pattern. I use an octave on one, chord on two, octave on three, chord on four. Now, I don't want to just always go back to that G every time, so I will use an alternating bass pattern. The note that I alternate with is going to be the fifth of that G chord, which is a D. There's a G chord, G is the one, D is the five. So alternate with that one and that five. just gives it a little bit more variety on that beat three. We call that an alternating bass and you can go up or down like that. Now notice measure two. I have a G in my bass on the first beat, story. The rest of the measure is still a G chord, but beat one is actually a C chord with an A in my melody. Technically, it acts like an A minor over a C chord with a G in the bass. So, what note do I actually play for my octave? I'm going to use a G. Even though I'm on that C chord with an A in the melody, I'm not going to play a C octave because my downbeat, which is beat one, needs to sound very foundational and heavy. Using a C there would upset the rest of the measure because I moved back to a G chord for beats two, three, and four in that measure. So notice I'm going to keep a G octave there on beat one. That works because my right hand's going to play a C, E, and an A, acting like it's from that C chord with an A in the melody. So because I'm technically on that C chord, I can use that G because there is a G in the C chord. That's why it sounds good. For that third measure, I'm on a C chord the entire time. So I will alternate a C with a chord and a C with a chord. Remember, like we talked about in measure one, if you'd like to alternate that bass, you can. However, I'm not going to. And the reason is because the very next measure, glory, I want it to sound very final, like I'm landing on that G chord coming down from the C chord I used in the previous measure. This is an E minor chord. 
However, look at beat four. The word on is a D chord. So I have two options. Following an octave chord pattern, I can do one, two, three, and just do a D chord on beat four. Or this is a great place to break up the pattern and do an extra octave on beat four. So notice that measure, gave his life. Again, I have a G chord on Calvary is an E minor chord. In fact, they sneak a B major chord on that 16th note at the end of beat one. The goal here with octave chord pattern is you keep a steady beat with a heavy octave on beat one. So notice in this little section where it's actually changing chords really quickly. I'm on a G and then I'm on a B major, E minor, and then I'm on another G and then an A major. There's a lot happening there. So you wanna look at these measures and say, this may not be a place where I add an octave chord, octave chord on every single beat. Instead, when you have a lot of chord changes in a row, consider using more octaves in your left hand instead, or chording with the right hand. Let me show you how both of those sounds. I'll start at how he gave. Or adding more chords into my left hand. The goal is that you keep a steady rhythm. So even as you learn an octave chord, octave chord pattern, remember it's not going to fit every measure perfectly. You want to be able to become more adaptable with the pattern and sometimes use connectors between the chords instead of just sticking to an octave chord motion. Let's continue through the verse. and that measure is a great place to just use octaves. You can use more of an octave chord pattern. So notice I'm on an A minor chord with a C in my bass on that last two measures of the verse, one the victory, C, with an A minor chord, G with a D in my bass, D chord, G. So the principle we learned from that measure is just because I'm on an A minor chord and then a G chord and then a D chord doesn't necessarily mean that I will play an octave A minor and an octave G. Instead, I look at where I'm headed. Good hymn players, a really great skill for you as a developing hymn player is to always be looking ahead. Look at where you're going in that phrase and see if you can build a connector or an octave chord pattern that guides you to that ending. So in this case, one, the victory, I'm going to use a C with an A minor, a D, even though I'm on a G chord, there's a D in the G chord, so it sounds really good to have that final D right there and then a D chord. So notice how well the octave D connects to the D chord, and then I rest on the G. So remember, you're not, just because you start on a G chord at the beginning of a measure, doesn't mean you're going to stay on a G chord the entire measure. The first measure of the chorus is a great example of that. I'm on a G chord for the first three beats, but then that fourth beat, I'm on a C chord. So if I'm using an octave chord pattern, I'm going to use a C chord on beat four. 
G7 chord there, add that F natural. Just like we had at the beginning, forever. Use a G in your bass because you're on a G chord. The rest of that measure, it's going to make it sound more restful. Notice how I used an octave on beat four in that measure, sought me one. because that D acts like a launching pad towards the downbeat of the next measure. So it's sometimes fine to change up this pattern in order to be thinking ahead of what will make the next measure sound really confident and strong. That's why for the fourth beat of this measure, sought me and, I used a strong octave D on beat four, which had me ready for the strong octave G in the next measure. Major the entire measure, that's why I alternated with the A and the E. D, I'm on that chord for the whole measure. Same there, beat four, play a C chord. For this next to the last measure, neath the cleansing, I go from a G chord to an A minor, to a G, to a D, and then back to a G. Because I am changing chords for all four beats, I am not going to try to use an octave chord, octave chord pattern. I'm going to just play octaves. When you have fast chord changes, don't try to play a pattern based off the first beat. Look at all the chords in a measure and then add a, something in your left hand that will correctly correspond with all of those. In this case, with it being a really upbeat song, octaves are the best way to go. An octave chord pattern is really a fun way to keep a nice steadiness in your left hand, but you don't want to just stay with only using octaves chords, octaves, chords. You want to find left hand connectors, walk ups, walk downs, other things to break up that pattern to make your hymn playing sound full, but also have lots of variety. To learn more about this style of playing, please check out my course, Basic Congregational Accompaniment, which gives you 20 video lessons and 20 sheet music arrangements where you can see all the fill-ins written out entirely. Now one other note about the octave chord pattern, and that is if you're in a different time signature other than 4-4, you can still use an octave chord pattern, but you'll adjust how many beats you play the chord. For example, in 3-4 timing, like Amazing Grace, you would play an octave on beat one and a chord on two and three. So for 3-4 timing, we would call that pattern octave chord chord octave chord chord, emphasizing that the octave comes in on beat one, nice heavy downbeat, and then the chord takes place on those following beats. I hope this video has been really helpful for you, and if it has, we'd be honored if you'd click that subscribe button so you stay notified about all of our upcoming videos. We want to continue posting great content for you church pianists, so let me know in the comments what you'd like to see another tutorial on, and we will work on it. Thanks for watching.